This video is sponsored by Rise. You probably don't understand how all the keyframe types in After Effects work. You may have seen them before, but you don't know exactly what they do and when you might wanna use one over the other. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the different types of keyframes that we have in After Effects and some really cool stuff that you can do with them. And I know what you're thinking, Jake, where'd you get that amazing shirt? And I'm glad you asked. You can click the card above or follow the link in the description to my store where you can find a variety of fashionable designs for motion designers. Now let's actually take a look at the four different types of keyframes that we have here in After Effects. Linear, Bezier, Eased, and hold. And you've probably seen all four of these icon types before. What I've done is set up an animation of these four keyframes moving across the screen using their particular type of keyframe. And you can download this project file if you want to follow along with me. Again, just follow the link in the description. Let's start with the first keyframe type, which is linear. And I'll just turn off these other ones for a second so we can focus on it. What linear is, is the default keyframe. This is what's gonna happen the first time you set a keyframe for any property, you're gonna get this shaped icon, and it's going to evenly distribute the value change across the time. So in this case, the position property is set to this value at this point in time, and it's set to a second value at that point in time. After Effects is going to evenly interpolate between those two keyframes, giving us a linear movement or a linear change change in value between each one of those keyframes. All these little dots in between, those are the interpolated frames that we don't have to set. After Effects is generating those for us, but it's completely linear, totally evenly distributed. The second keyframe type is Bezier, and you can get to this type of keyframe with them selected and just controller command clicking on them once. They turn into circles instead of the diamond shape. And what this is going to do is not all that apparent. If we play this back and look at them side by side, they almost look like they're identical. But if we go into the speed graph, you'll see that it's not linear. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see that there are some easings happening between keyframes versus the linear keyframes. Let's just look at those. It's just one rate of change and then a second rate of change. There's no connection between the incoming and outgoing velocities of any of these values. But with the Bezier keyframes, it's connected all of those incoming and outgoing velocities and just ever so slightly eased everything out. The thing is it literally looks identical. The ease is so slight that you really can't see a difference. But if I jump back into that speed graph one more time, what it does do for us is connect the handles. So I can go in now and start easing things and these two handles are gonna be connected. Whereas in the linear, they're separate. And if I wanted to ease them together, I'm either gonna have to line them up and hope that I'm precise or convert them to Bezier keyframes by Alt or Option clicking on them until they're all connected like that. And now they are Bezier keyframes instead of linear keyframes. Let me undo back to linear keyframes. And I wanna point something out with these Bezier keyframes. You see this one that I edited? It's now showing up as an eased keyframe. If I right click on it and go to keyframe interpolation, we're gonna see that it's actually set to continuous Bezier on the temporal interpolation. Now in a previous video, I talked all about spatial interpolation. This is not spatial interpolation where it's dealing with where the interpolated frames actually are positioned in the comp. This is temporal interpolation where these values actually land in time between the keyframes that you've set. And keeping track of time is something that I believe is not only important in After Effects, but in my daily life as well. And Rise, the sponsor of this video, can help you do just that. Since I work for myself, I have to manage my own work-life schedule. And one way to make sure that I'm successful in both of those things is by keeping track of my time and seeing where I'm spending that time each day. That lets me get my work done faster so that I can spend the time that I have where I really want it to be, which is with my family. Rise is an intelligent time tracker that improves your focus and helps you build better work habits. After you install it on your computer, it keeps track of how you're spending your time throughout your day. It automatically keeps track of how much time you're spending in each app and categorizes your work activity in real time. You can improve your focus with Rise's daily score with in-depth personalized metrics so you can quantify and track your daily activity. It can even help you prevent burnout and have healthier work habits by reminding you to take breaks at set intervals. And everything is completely customizable. You can tell Rise exactly how to categorize each app so that you can have better insight into how you're spending your time each day. Try Rise for free today and start maximizing your productivity. The first 1,000 people to use my code or click the link in the description can save 25% off your first three months with Rise. Thanks so much to Rise for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the keyframes. Now, if we go into this menu, there's actually Bezier, Continuous Bezier, and Auto Bezier. If you wanna know the difference between these three things, I'll link to it in the description to the Adobe Help Guide where it explains it. I was originally going to try and explain it in this video, but honestly, it's a little bit confusing and it isn't very beneficial to know. All you really need to know is the fact that when you convert these to Bezier keyframes and you go into the speed or the value graph, these handles are gonna be linked and that's beneficial. So if you need that to happen across all those keyframes, that's how you can do it. 
Now let's take a look at the eased keyframes and see how that looks a little bit different. Obviously, the motion is much different because we're easing in and out of every keyframe value. And if I go into the speed graph, we can see all of that easing very clearly with the speed starting and ending at zero for every single set keyframe and speeding up between those keyframes with the interpolated frames. However, if I were to grab one of these handles and click and drag it up, note that those two handles are not together because again, this is not a Bezier keyframe, it's just eased. Now I can again convert this to a Bezier keyframe by alter option clicking on that keyframe once and then one more time and it's going to link them together and then I can re-ease this however I want and make it totally custom. But that's the difference between eased and Bezier. Finally, we have a hold keyframe, and this is a very interesting one that can solve some problems in some cases, but what it's going to do is remove all interpolation between keyframes. You see my speed graph is a straight zero linear line across, and that's because there's no interpolation between these keyframes. It's just showing the change in value where you set those actual keyframes and nowhere else. And this can be useful for a lot of situations. Again, in the spatial interpolation video, this solved the problem of drifting position when you have two position keyframes with the exact same value. It eliminates any kind of interpolation between those two keyframes in time. Another scenario is when you want to have this kind of segmented, very posterized animation, and you don't want to use the posterized time effect or actually lower the frame rate of your comp. If you want something to be here and then there, or rotate from this point to that point without any interpolation, that's exactly what hold keyframes are for. And you can set hold keyframes by either right clicking and saying toggle hold keyframe, or click on the keyframe while holding control and alt, and that converts it to a hold keyframe. Another thing to note about hold keyframes, as you can see, is that it's half square. It doesn't look like the actual icon up here because this is only holding on the outgoing frames. If I were to change this to a linear keyframe, then it's going to reinterpolate between this keyframe and the next one, unless I converted that one to a hold keyframe as well. And in some cases, that's exactly what you would want to happen. Be able to interpolate into that keyframe, but that hold that value until the value changes again. So those are the four main types of keyframes that we have access to in After Effects, but there's one more behavior that's really useful called Rove Across Time. So let's jump over to the second comp, and I've got a couple of keyframes laid out in this ball in the center that I'm gonna animate just using the position property, and I'm gonna have it kind of go around all these keyframes and end up off screen again. So let's start by just moving it off screen, and I'll set a position keyframe here. I'll move forward to about one second, and let's say I want the next spot for this ball to be right underneath this linear keyframe. So I'll zoom in here nice and close, and I want it to come really close to that keyframe, but not quite touch it. And then eventually it will go off screen over here. Why don't we go to the two second mark and I'll just move it up and over here. Now, this is not the path that I actually want it to take, but it is the timing that I want, the one second spread apart. And that's how I'm approaching this animation as the first step of the process. The next thing I wanna do is kind of draw out the motion path that I want this ball to actually take. This is the spatial interpolation that I talked about in the other video. So the way that I wanna do this is by just going to a different point in time between the first two keyframes. It doesn't really matter where in time it is yet. And then just click and drag the ball and move it to about where I want it to be. So let's use this grid and maybe just put it right about here. And then I'll switch to my pen tool to modify the motion path that we can see up here in the comp. So I'll grab the pen tool and I can click and drag on this point to just shape this however I want, just like if I were drawing vector paths. Then I can come to this keyframe, click and drag, and just shape that out as well so that it kind of swoops down below this keyframe and then ends up up here. And so what that's gonna look like is that. I've got the ball swooping down on that motion path. The timing between the keyframes, the interpolation that's happening there has not changed. It's just the spatial interpolation up here in the comp where we see that ball actually traveling. This is something that's only available on the position property when the dimensions are combined. So if you separated dimensions, you can't use a motion path like this, which is why a lot of times I don't separate those dimensions. But now that I have this motion path, I can modify this however I want. So if I switch to my selection tool with the V key, I can maybe move this up closer to that hold keyframe, just shape this however I want to get the path that I'm after. So maybe it swoops in a little bit coming from right to left and then dips down, comes up to this linear keyframe and I want it to kind of hold there before dropping back down and going around these keyframes. So again, I'm gonna go to a different point between these two keyframes grab my pen tool and I can actually just click anywhere on this motion path to add another keyframe there and then go back to my selection tool and move this around wherever I want. So let's say it comes up to the linear keyframe and then drops back down, does a loop around the eased keyframe and then back through here, 
swoops around the bezier keyframe and then flies off the side. So I'm gonna need a keyframe right there and I'll add some bezier handles. G is the keyboard shortcut for the pen tool. I'll click and drag that out and then go back to right about here, click and add another keyframe. Again, I'm not worried about the timing yet, just the actual placement where this ball is going to travel so that I can plot out the motion path and then I'll work on the timing in a minute. So I want it to kind of curve around there. I'll add another keyframe. We'll drag this one down, probably around the same spot. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as that first keyframe below the eased one right there, but I'm just sculpting this motion path to do the motion that I actually want. And what I want it to do in the end is kind of just loop around the eased keyframe one more time and then change directions and fly off to the right. Now that might be a little too extreme of a motion going this direction and that direction. So why don't I pull this up a little bit and we've got something like that. Now, we have a lot more segmentation in our path, our motion path right here, because there aren't nearly as many frames to interpolate between the keyframes I've set as we'd have on the front end. But really all I'm concerned with is the starting point, this point right here, and the last point. Because in my head, the way that I want this ball to travel is moving very quickly out of the first keyframe and kind of pausing right here under this linear keyframe. So easing very strongly into that, and then ease very strongly out of that keyframe while it does all this other motion and eventually flies off the screen. So I don't really wanna concern myself with all the timing of the other keyframes, just the ones that I really want to ease. And that's exactly what Rove Across Time is going to allow me to do. So again, those keyframes that I'm most concerned with are the last one, this one right here, and this one. And with the selected in the current version of After Effects, I can actually label those keyframes so that they're easier to identify. So if I just give myself some more room, right click, go to label, I could say make these pink. And now I know those are the keyframes that I really care about. The other ones can all just be evenly distributed based on the easing of the keyframes that I just selected. To do that, I just need to select those keyframes and I can do all of them at once. So I'll select all those right click on one of them and go to rove across time and immediately they change to these circles but they're smaller than the bezier keyframes it's not the same i can still select them but as soon as i try to move them they're no longer rove across time so let me undo back to where we were and you'll notice they've also spaced out differently than how they were before what after effects is doing is looking at this motion path and the time that it takes to get from one keyframe to the next and just spreading out those other keyframes between those keyframes you've already set you can think of these as kind of custom interpolated keyframes. After Effects is still determining the timing of those interpolated keyframes, but you got to set the values for them, which means I can now go into these highlighted keyframes and ease them however I want. So let's start by just easy easing them with the F9 key and go into the speed graph. And you'll notice it looks like I only am dealing with those three keyframes because all of the rove across time keyframes have been evenly distributed between the standard keyframes. And I can adjust this ease however I want, and all those rove across time keyframes are going to rove, depending on how much space is between each keyframe up here in the comp on that motion path. So I can click and drag these around, and that affects where they'll be roving in the timeline itself. So from here, I can really go to town just easing this however I want. I want strong easing out of that first keyframe and into the second one. So it's moving very fast at the start and then slows down once it hits this linear keyframe. So I'm gonna just totally blow out the influence to 100% there, pull it really far out from that keyframe going into the next one, and that's where it's going to speed up, loop around a couple times, and then swoop off the side of the screen. Again, I'm gonna remove the influence from that outgoing keyframe so that it moves very quickly at the end. And I can modify this motion path however I want and everything is going to update for me. So maybe I wanna have this not go off to the right so much, maybe I want it to go more straight up. And then I can just kind of curve this out and maybe adjust the shape of that entire motion path until I'm happy with the way that this looks. So why don't we play this back and see how that ball is traveling around. That actually looks pretty cool. So we have that very fast motion coming in. It gets very close to touching the linear keyframe, but doesn't, and then swoops around and just flies off the screen very quickly. And you saw just how easy it was for me to be able to sculpt that motion path and get the ball to travel exactly where I wanted it to, but then only concern myself with the timing of select keyframes. That way I don't have to think about the easing of anything else, and I can just tell After Effects to handle the rest of it. Now I think this looks pretty good, but I can make it look even better because it's moving so fast and there's no motion blur. I am working at 24 frames per second, which is a traditional frame rate for animation. And typically you're not gonna use motion blur in a traditional frame rate. If you're trying 
to make this look like it was more of a traditional animation. Instead, smear frames would be a much more appropriate option here. And over at Battle Axe, we made a freebie called Schmear, which I love, I use it all the time. And it's just a little preset that you can download and apply, or you can set it up with K-Bar, which is how I have it set up. I've got the little Schmear icon. So with that ball selected, I'll just click on Schmear. And that's going to generate automatic smear frames based on how fast your layer is traveling. Now, I want to move the effects that it just added to above the two glows that I have applied to that ball. That way it's not smearing out the glow and the glow is applied after the smears. But look at the difference that that makes in the overall motion. It just really sells the velocity of that ball and I can dial this in however I want. I think those trails are a little bit long. So I'm gonna change the smear length from 100% down to 70%. And I'm also gonna increase the distance threshold up to say, let's say 70 as well. That way it doesn't generate smears as often. The ball has to be traveling more quickly before you see the smears. But I think that looks just so much better. And very quickly I was able to add those customizable smear frames with no effort at all. And you can go download that for free at Battle Battleaxe.co. But those are all the types of keyframes that I think you need to be aware of in After Effects. It's very important that you really have a good grasp on all of those keyframe types and when to use them. Let me know if you have any special use cases for keyframes in After Effects. I'd love to hear about it. And if you're interested in supporting more tutorials like this one, then please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. A huge thank you to all the patrons that are already over there. As always, if there's something about After Effects that confuses you, leave a comment down below and I'll consider making a video about it. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Ed, 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 